Coda packs allow anyone to sync data across multiple tools, pulling data from one tool into Coda. And since Coda 4.0, you can also push data from Coda, directly editing that data in your Coda tables and pushing data back to the other tools if you decide so. In this video, we are exploring how you can essentially build a sync table between Pipedrive and Coda, but the high-level overview that I will give in this video is applicable to any sync table that you can create by developing your own custom packs. And I come from this as a somewhat beginner in this field, so I will walk through my experience building a sync table and all the essentials that you need to know when it comes to attacking this action item. For this example, we are syncing pipe drive deals and stages in Coda. We are doing this through this test account that I have in pipe drive. What you can see here, we have different stages from qualified all the way to negotiation started in this pipeline. Each stage can have multiple deals, such as test or deal that you can see right here. And each deal is at one stage at a time. And our goal with this pack is to sync these deals into Coda in a table that looks like this, where we have the deal name, the status, the stage, which is pulled from a related table, and other properties that we might have. For this example, we just keep it simple and get some of these properties here. To achieve this, we are using the Coda Packs environment here. I will not go through the authentication process because that's out of the scope of this video. I will only go through how to create a sync table. You can find the Coda Packs SDK on the Coda website and linked in the description of this video as well. And this is a very in-depth and well-made reference and documentation for Coda Packs where you can quickly understand how to use them. This is how you can create a pack in Coda, which you can also find in your Coda workspace under the Packs section. Packs are universal, so whatever you create, you will find your packs in the centralized place in any workspace. Right here, as you can see, the first thing that I did, I imported some data. And also, importantly enough, one pack can only call one network domain because you can't use multiple domains in one single pack. One pack, one domain. In this case, we are using the packdrive.com domain because that's what we're going to use for our API calls to pull data from Packdrive into Coda. Next up here are some authentication steps, which I'm going to skip for now, but you can see that at a high level, that's a user authentication method that we are using. And in settings, there are OAuth credentials that I added following the Packdrive API documentation which is a very important piece of the puzzle here as well, because you want to follow that documentation to understand exactly what calls you need to make and what kind of authentication you need for connecting your Coda table with Pipedrive. Now, if you scroll down here, there is some older code and here are some, the latest experimentation that I've done where we are syncing those two tables, deals and stages from the Pipedrive API to Coda. And the first thing that we do here is we set up a variable that is the schema of the stages table. And we use the coda.makeobject schema here to set up what is the structure of that table exactly, what are the properties that you want to pull from Pipedrive into the Coda table, and what property types are those, and whether they are mutable and where they come from or required. You can find all of these specifications in the Pipedrive API documentation as well as in the Coda Pack SDK in terms of how to use this method. In the Coda Packs environment, you can also use the slash command at any time to see all the options that you have. In this example, the stages table from Pipedrive has a few properties, and what we are pulling from this example is the name of the stage, as you can see here, as the description says and the description is going to show up on the table when you hover here under the information icon. You can see that the description will show up. And there is the type, so what data type that is. The name of the stage in this case is a string, and that's why in Coda that's a string type property. And then we can specify if it is required, 
In this case, yes, it is required because that's the important stage name that will determine then the position of a DL in the pipeline. And then the other properties that we are syncing in this stage ID, where there is this description, the type is a number property in this case, it is required. And as you can see here, there is an additional parameter that is from key ID. And that's because we are calling this property in Coda stage ID, as you can see from here. It is called stage ID, but in the pipe drive API, it is actually called ID. And that is why we need to define this from key to ensure that the pack understands when making the call that whenever you see the ID from the stages pipe drive endpoint, that means it needs to sync with the stage ID column in our Coda table. And that's why we define this. Next up, there's also a display property. In this case, that's the name property here. And the ID property of the table, that is the stage ID. The ID is a unique value, and the display property in Coda is the property that is the first one that has this display column icon, and that allows you to expand that row to see the information in side peak or in full screen like this. And that is it when it comes to how to define the schema of a table that you want to sync from a third party tool into Coda. The next step after defining the schema following the API documentation of the tool is to actually create the sync table by making the API call to the appropriate endpoint. In this case, you can see we use the pack.addSync table method. The name of the table is stages1. As you can see here, that name would be reflected on the Coda table right there. The schema, that's the name of the schema, stages schema2 that we defined already up here. And the identity name, that's usually the singular of the name of the table. Next up, we want to open a formula argument here so that we can specify the name of the formula, the description of the formula, what it does. If it has any parameters, that's where you can define them. But in this case, we do not need any parameters. And then we execute a function that calls the pipe drive API, in this case, in the stages object in particular, with a get method, and we return the results. And the structure of the results response will depend on each API. In pipe drive, for example, results are represented with this response.body.data structure. And then we return the results. And that means that whenever we are in a Coda doc, we can use this slash command and type the pack name or just select packs. And then you will find the installed packs in your doc. If it is not installed yet, you will follow the prompts on the screen to install that pack. And once you have it installed, you can then see what building blocks are available on that pack. For example, here, because I only created these two sync tables, these are the things that we have on the pack, stages and deals synced tables. Then you have some settings where you can define the rate at which you want these tables to refresh, whether it be automatically daily, hourly, which is only available on Teams, or manually. And you can see more things and information about the pack. To then create a sync table, you can just drag and drop that table into the quota doc, which I already did, and that's why I can't do it again. And then a table looks exactly like this. In this case, that's the stages table that I showed you in the pack on how I built it. And the stages table is composed of the name and the stage ID. Pretty simple. That's mostly a backend table that allows us to then create a reference here that is a relation column in Coda language to the stages table so that we can actually have a native relation between DLs and stages within Coda. And to achieve that, we use a specific reference schema that is a method here available in the Coda Packs language that is stages reference schema. That's the name of the schema. And then we use this method coda.make reference schema from object schema where we call the schema that you want to reference, that is the stages schema that I showed you before, and the identity name that is stage one, again, from the stages 
sync table that I showed you before. And once we define this reference schema, we can then use that in the DLs schema when defining which properties we want to show, because one property in the DLs table is this stage. And we know that this stage can come from our other sync table in the Coda pack that we are building. And for that reason, you can see here that this stage property calls the stage reference schema. And this allows us to have this relationship. Then you can see here the other properties that I pulled from the pipe drive API. This is the sync table and the API call to get the DLs in this case. And finally, we return the results for DLs. And in this case, we loop through the results to get the stage ID. And if the stage ID exists in the stages one table, then that is how we automatically fill out the stage relation column in the coda table that becomes a native relation between deals and stages. If not, we just return not found. And here I need to thank Eric, who is a coda developers advocate to help me with figuring this out. And now you will see that if I go to pack drive and let's say I'm going to add a new deal. And you can see this stage is contact made. I'm going to save it. I'm going to rename this XYZ. Now let's go to the Kota Pack playground. I can refresh this table. You will see right now there are three deals. And now there is also the fourth one. And this stage was automatically populated via a relation to the stages table that is contact made. And that's how you can create a sync table between a third party tool and Coda, also with some native features such as a relation column. In addition, since very recently, you can also allow users to edit data from Coda and push those edits to the third party tool. This is outside of the scope of this video and I will explore this in a future video. If you have any questions or comments, you can drop them down below. You will find all the relevant links in the description of this video. For now, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.